Welcome to the Raised with Jesus podcast, 10 minutes every day where the life of Jesus meets yours. We've got your daily Bible reading for January 25th, 2019, looking at the second portion of Luke, chapter 18. Beginning in verse 18, a certain ruler asked Jesus, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except one, God. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. I have kept all of these since I was a child, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when the ruler heard these words, he became very sad, because he was very rich. When Jesus saw that the man became very sad, he said, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this said, Then who could be saved? He replied, What is impossible for people is possible for God. And Peter said, Look, we have left our possessions and followed you. He said to them, Amen, I tell you, anyone who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will most certainly receive many times more in this time and in the age to come eternal life. He took the twelve aside and said to them, Look, we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written through the prophets about the Son of Man will be accomplished. Indeed, he will be handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, mistreat him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. They did not understand any of these things. What he said was hidden from them, and they did not understand what he said. As he approached Jericho, a blind man sat by the road begging. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him that Jesus the Nazarene was passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were at the front of the crowd rebuked him, telling him to be quiet, but he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, I want to see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and began following Jesus, glorifying God. All the people, when they saw this, gave praise to God. This is the word of our God. It seems as Luke is taking up the topic of faith and what does faith look like, he reemphasizes that Jesus is the Savior for all people. He is the Savior for that persistent widow, and because he answers prayers even more quickly and more readily than that unjust judge, and we reflect our faith in him by our persistence. He is the Savior for that tax collector in the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, and our attitude of faith toward him is humility, knowing that we bring nothing to the table, but that he must do all of the cleansing of us in order to bring us into God's presence. He is the Savior of the little children who are brought to him, and he says the kingdom of God is made of such as these. He is the Savior of even the rich young ruler that we get to today. The man says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Good teacher. What he was expecting was a pat on the back an affirmation of his own his own status as a good teacher or a good man. And obviously he must be a good man because look at all of his wealth. Because he kind of subscribes to this idea of karma that we talked about a few days ago. This idea that says, I can look at my life, I can look at my circumstances, and I can know my standing with God based on based on my wealth, based on how my life is going, the fact that I have not a care in the world. That proves that God is smiling at me, but there was still an empty hole, an empty space in his life. And so he asked Jesus, a fellow good teacher, according to, according to his terminology, what must I do to inherit eternal life? 
What is the final little thing that I have to do? This is very similar to a few chapters back when we have, when we have this man who wanted to justify himself and who is my neighbor. And Jesus responded with the parable of the Good Samaritan. Here, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus turns to him and obviously he says, well, what does the law say? Keep the commandments. Do this and you will live. Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not give false testimony, love your father and mother, and by the way, no one is good except God alone. And that must have must have struck his ears and grated on his self-esteem ever so much. No one is good except one that is God and him alone. And so the response from Jesus, he sees this man's spiritual condition. You know, usually conversation bears that out, what somebody thinks of themselves and, um, and where they, they stand with God. And this conversation is no different. And as the Son of God, Jesus no doubt has extra insight if he should choose to um, use that during this period of his humiliation, maybe he has chosen not to, but the man's spiritual condition is obvious from the conversation. No one is good except God alone. Keep the commandments. And the, and the man says, I have kept all of these since I was a child. And maybe in an external way, maybe he hasn't actually killed somebody, um, but he missed the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus makes a spiritual application to all these commandments, he missed the Old Testament prophets who make spiritual applications to all these commandments and diagnose the problems of the heart before they get to the problems of action. And so Jesus has to zoom in on the one thing that would really wake this guy up and cut to the core, where his confidence that he is in good good graces with God depends on all that he has as proof of that fact. And Jesus says, go sell all your possessions and give to the poor. Then come follow me. And when he says that, the man realizes, oh my, I can't do that. His confidence, his self-esteem, his self-worth, his, his idea that he doesn't have much left to do and that he's kept all the commandments and Jesus just points out one when he's talking about love for God and love for others and this man has has wealth that he loves more than more than Jesus so when he when Jesus confronts this guy he's really saying don't you realize how lost you are and he needs to make the point of law sharp enough to wake this guy up and he wants this man just as just as everybody else up until this point in this chapter, when he talks about the persistent widow, the Pharisee, and the tax collector, the little children, he wants this man to know him and to follow him. And the man turns away and he says, well, I can't do that. He cares too much and where would, where would tomorrow's bread come from? And the irony. And of course the disciples, the disciples throw their hands up. Who can be saved? And Peter responds a little bit later on, Lord, we've left our possessions. We've left everything to follow you. What's in it for us? It's still the same mindset, just the reverse. It's still the mindset that, that what we have um, either is reflective of what God thinks of us or what we don't have is the reason God thinks highly of us. And Jesus says that bit about um, anyone who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will most certainly receive many times more in this life. And as a pastor who's now served in, I think, three different congregations, that is very true. Traveling anywhere within our fellowship, uh, it's like you have an instant church family. There's no other way to describe it. An instant church family of people who welcome you, people who are part of your life, and people who, who demonstrate to you that we all are members of the same fellowship and the same family of God. So then as, as Luke kind of continues this discussion of faith, as he considers the, the different people that Jesus meets, the discussion of faith that doesn't always see. As Jesus tells in very plain language what's going to happen to him, and the disciples still don't get it. But the irony that's followed up exactly by a man who's blind and who sees, hears Jesus, and his faith sees Jesus as he really is. 
Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, I want to see Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, that title that says Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus is the promised Son of David. And so the irony, the one who cannot see, sees Jesus through faith and receives his sight. And the disciples who can see, who have heard and seen Jesus do marvelous things and so many different marvelous things and miracles, they don't see, but they will. And we'll get to that in the next couple of, or probably next week and the week after. So as you go about your day today, um, thank God for the faith that he has given to you. You can pray for a greater faith and pray that, that we would see God's blessings in all of their blessedness. Whether that is blessing hidden in trial, temptation, and suffering, or blessings that we see every day and take for granted. And then, and then ask the Lord, please help me to use this to your glory, that, that even what you have given me here on earth might not distract me from heaven, but might be used in order to, um, in order to further the proclamation of your gospel, that somebody else, somebody else might also see you. You can find us Sunday morning at 2250 South Holland, Sylvania Road in Maumee. You could also follow us on Instagram at Raised with Jesus and on Facebook, Resurrection Maumee. Just use the hashtag Raised with Jesus and Wells Toledo, W-E-L-S Toledo. God bless your day.